Hi everyone, John Marshall, Drill Master. This, actually, I don't know the school, but this is an Air Force Giorazzi. Uh, they just competed at uh, the Air Force uh, National Competition. So, let's go over uh, the videos. Now, this is uh, the whole performance is in three different videos, and then there's a <clears throat> excuse me, then there's a uh, a couple of photos that I want to get into as well. So just at the at the start, uh, got uh, uh, left guard. You're not. Oh, you are wearing chin straps down. Okay, so left guard. Your 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 all the fingers, just like here, here, here. Uh, all the fingers need to be up against your thigh, and you so you have that that left kind of the the pinky hanging out there and then you're uh, even though you can't see them your both of your spades should be flat here but other than that the team looks good nice tuck here that's that's really good and it looks like uh this isn't um uh, but then again guards and you're you're moving with the rifles and all that so maybe that's a uh, uh, and it looks like uh, he's tucked as well. Not sure, kind of separating here. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, if the organizational bearer is tucked, then what? Whoever whoever did the tucking, you know, you'd, you'd use the bu the buddy system of uh, somebody uh, takes the uniform, the the blouse, and pulls it from the front and back, tucks it in, folds it forward at those quarter panel seams, and then you put your belt on yourself. Uh, so after you do that, though, take both hands and pull on either side. This is called the split here. This is called the vent. So what you need to do is pull the vent down and in together. And, uh, and it actually looks like Huh. It looks like uh, uh, right rifle guard has a double vent uh, blouse, and double vents are only at uh, the Air Force Honor Guard. Anyway, you know, whatever. Um, let's see what happens here. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. So, uh, just in, in the first movement... So, <clears throat> um, I this is probably going to be a long video, all right? So, just in the first movement, left guard, what you're doing here, let me, uh, I'll try and uh, bring this up a bit. Okay, so left guard, what you're doing here, you're coming up to, to port, but you're, you're bringing your left hand out, and then coming over instead of straight from the side here coming up to the rifle so you're you're coming and it, it's quite possible it's quite possible now I gotta lower this it's quite possible that you are um, that the the reason you're doing that like there the reason you're doing that is you're mirroring both hands uh, and and bringing them both out like that, so uh, need to need to be a little more confined in what you're doing, your movement, and think of it as you being in this really skinny hallway, and you have to go from order to port, and if you go anywhere outside of where your arms are, where your shoulders are, really. Uh, let's say that there's uh, a wall on either side and it's right next to your shoulders, then you can't you can't make any outward movement. Okay, so the uh, <clears throat> yeah, right rifle guard is is doing what I'm talking about. Yeah, just coming straight up. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's get to you, color bearers. Yeah, you're <clears throat> never look down and never look up like you did. Never. That's that's not a thing. Not at all. All right. So, you have your staff. And what you're both doing is you're you're bringing the staff 
all the way up like this. No, I'm not going to hit my ceiling fan this time. <clears throat> I don't know why you're you're coming straight up like that. That that really doesn't uh, doesn't make a lot of uh, uh, sense to me. Yeah, so you're coming straight up and holding the staff with both hands, and I I don't know why you're you're doing that the, with it just it's it's not the, okay so it's not the technique i'm used to and just because it's not the technique i'm used to doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong okay i don't i don't this is not about right and wrong in this instance when i was talking about left guard yeah that's wrong that you're coming out with the hand and then bringing it over for a a sharper movement it's it's not sharp it's it's uh too much <clears throat> so for here the the really what you should be doing is bringing your your staff up to the well, let me let me show you this all right so I've done this several times in, in videos and I know it looks a little strange but it helps okay <clears throat> so so here's the harness socket Obviously, it's much too high. Nobody's going to wear it this high, but it's just for getting it in the camera there. All right, so the technique that you're looking for that's going to be much more precise and not require you to look down is going... Now, I'll get to looking up in just a minute, so stand by there. All right, you're going to, on the command arms... Uh, oh, colors, actually. Uh, carry colors. So you're giving carry colors. Carry colors... You're lifting the staff with the right hand. The left hand does not touch the staff, okay? So you're lifting it up you're, so that this is the lower ferrule. The lower ferrule is going to hover above the, uh, the harness socket. You're bringing your left hand not to the staff, but to the harness socket. All right, so here's what I suggest. I've been doing this for decades. Uh, take your two fingers, two, two bottom fingers here, and put them on the harness socket, all right? Now, from there, you have these three fingers to where you can, it, with the, your your hand-to-hand -hand coordination, it should be very simple. Eventually, you, you need to get that muscle memory, but you'll do it. So you bring up your staff centered on your torso and so that the, the ferrule, the lower ferrule, is above the harness socket. All you do is reach with your fingers to guide the the <clears throat> the ferrule into the harness socket while you do that you're pushing back on the harness socket like that so that because when you stick it straight down the the hole here is at an angle the hole in the bottom of the, the cup there so when you tilt it back then you can stick the the ferrule all the way through that little hole at the bottom there all right so carry colors one two there now as soon as you get to two it's in then you at some point uh, you can co you need to coordinate this but then you'll slide your your arm down now you're using army manual I noticed that you're <clears throat> in another video as I was numbering them I they were sent uh, in a strange order so I wanted to make sure that that everything was sequenced uh, both guards are at right shoulder and you have left hand on the socket there so that means you're using army techniques throughout fine Anyway, so what you're going to have to do, though, since, you, <clears throat> since you're not using the launch technique, you're using the pickup technique. So pickup means that you keep your right hand on the staff where it was when it was at order. It, it doesn't move. Launch technique means you have it slide through as you lift it up. It's a, about four, maybe five, six inches. So then you slide it in, and then you drop your hand so that your, uh, slide your hand down so that it's in front of your mouth, and then you just relax that elbow there. Air Force requires this, and it looks, it kind of looks sharp, but it's silly, and the hand is much too low. All right, so color bearers. The reason that you, so I was telling you to check your spades, make sure that your spade is flat to the front. And it's it's still the same, you know. You you have a, a two sided uh, uh, case on there that is right over the spade, so you make sure that your spades are flat and good to go. <clears throat> you can use the thumbtack method. You can use a little a little uh, uh, groove in the wood, just a tiny groove. And what I what I would suggest is 
you make a long a line about an inch long and you can if you're a little shorter you'll be able to look up a little bit and see it if you're a little taller you can look down a little bit just with your eyes and and you hold it so that you know that line means that your spade is straight every or flat everything's fine plus it's on the correct side so if you don't see it then you can turn the uh, turn the staff not an ideal situation in this kind of atmosphere with a competition but you're going to uh, you're going to need to make sure that as soon as you fall in you look up check your spade or you don't use the thumbtack method if you don't feel the thumbtack then you turn it and make sure that you do but uh, whatever you do you cannot look up and look down whatever sequence you use so please don't do that excellent left wheel that was really nice so that was interesting right there left guard that you you swung your hand only up to as you were entering the the next left wheel you swung your your hand only up to the the center line and then went back so um, maybe it's a multiple responsibilities thing maybe this is mo uh, uh, a muscle memory thing so multiple responsibilities means that you are doing a, a, just a, a bunch of things you can make a whole list you're stand you're you're marching at attention you're staying in step uh, you're you're making sure that you your step is metered with the rest of the team so that you're staying in line and then you are maintaining the cadence and you're holding your rifle and making sure that it doesn't move and you can add to that list a bunch of other things so all of these responsibilities ends up sometimes you're you, you have this massive concentration going on and sometimes something slips that that just requires a bunch more uh, uh, practice I really appreciate the arm swing though except right guard you're you're bending your elbow just slightly at the 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 apex of the forward swing at the very front of that so <clears throat> nice spacing there you did a really good job nice job on the sling arms but both of your hands are too high <clears throat> you're up here and what you should be is here I'm trying to hike up my shoulder here you need to have that forearm horizontal all right but the the, the the synchronization of movement and <coughs> and the technique really well done it's not a facing movement it's a, it's a face in march <coughs> so the the face in it's a face in marching a face in march so for the uh, the left guard you're going to pivot on that that you well you're both going to pivot on the the right foot platform the platform is the ball of the foot and everything forward all right so your left guard you're going off to the left like that but you have to make that 45 degree pivot all right it's not just a step it's definitely not a facing movement so same thing with the right rifle guard although your foot really is pointing in that direction you still have to make a little bit of an effort to pivot and even if it's just slight because you're just going to step over in that direction uh, so anyway you take your three steps out halt and about face so in and this is fine you can you can do this marching straight ahead and then sidestepping that's okay uh, the so you're at an angle what I highly suggest to make this more efficient and to this will shave off a couple of seconds instead of instead of facing doing that half face and then marching together what I, I highly suggest is since you're facing that angle is you march at that angle into the uh, the <clears throat> the staffs where the tie is on the case so let's say that here's the 
here's the case right here. The heel of my hand is the case. You come in and you end up, don't stop and then face, but you end up facing directly each other, you know, both the guards, at where the, the end of the case is, where that tie is, so all you have to do is reach up. Instead of this marching together, side step, side step, side step, side step, then you get to there. <clears throat> It, this method is a little less efficient and it, it can st speed things up just a little bit more um, but it also looks in in I'm just giving you opinion here it also looks a little more smooth so <clears throat> the, the way you do this though is you have your outside foot so your what I'm gonna call the outside will we e either outside or inside really doesn't matter so we're gonna call it the outside foot so this for the for the the right rifle guard, the outside foot is going to be the left foot, and then for the uh, the left guard, it's the right foot. So as you as you're both marching in, that last step faces the the staffs. So you're marching at this angle, and then that last step, you're going to come to uh, a, uh, you're going to halt so that your feet come together at a 45 degree angle, face it so that your body, your shoulders, are square with the staff. <coughs> So look here what we have. We've got the end drooping and then we have the hand on the end. So you're not using the same technique. It's very close, but still not the same technique. So there's <clears throat> nothing says you can't do that about face take a step a couple of steps and then about face again and then execute a facing movement nothing says you can't do that it's neither here nor there um although the <clears throat> the fold looked really uh quite bunched up at least for uh for the left guard there But you, you're holding them properly. You're holding them like a book, which is good. Again, looking up, that's just not what you do. Oh, yeah. Okay, so get to the other. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, crud. Oh, missed a huge chunk. Oh, well, that's disappointing. So, wh okay, why did you do that? Guards, right here, you finished? Why did you go to, why did you bring your right hand to the small of the stock to go to port and then drop it to the heel, the, the butt stock? <clears throat> There's no reason to do that. You, you finish, hand, over, and you're good to go. So, got a, do we have a flared, uh, yeah. There, flared elbow, and flared-ish elbow. Not as horizontal as uh, right guard, but still... <clears throat> The, the flared air elbow is not a thing. It's tucked. When you when you bring the rifle to uh, to right shoulder, elbow is down here. I know my mic is blocking a little bit. Elbow is down, not up here. So why are your harness sockets so low? You've got harness crotch syndrome going on there, and it's not necessary. The harness can be just a couple inches down below the, the belt. You, you've got a little bit of a difference in height, but almost the same waist level. So there's there's no reason to, uh, to have the harness socket so low, and then also have 
and you're using state. I understand why you're using state, but I uh, really should be using the Air Force JROTC organizational. <clears throat> anyway, uh, uh, but then having uh, the state just a bit lower, then it's unnecessary. Um, both of you could have the, could be wearing the the harnesses, uh, the harness sockets at the uh, the same level. So guards, are you going to flare or are you going to wrap? Air Force, uh, uh, the Air Force pamphlet <clears throat> has the hand uh, flared, but then the Army has the uh, the hand wrapped. So um, you can you use the the Army uh, procedures, but use Air Force techniques. And I, I know that can be a little confusing, so I'll, I'll leave a, a link to an article that, that explains that. It's called The Argument from the Air Force Pamphlet. So left guard you're moving your head there so you're using the flank technique and not the face and march technique for these two <clears throat> and your your colors cases are they they look bad they really do you have the the cases draped over so at, at least if the cases did not have the string showing and look at that see this is uneven it's bunched up the string is is falling out uh, this one's a little better because it's squared off at the bottom like that but what your your goal is to tuck the case in the belt this is in the belt this is over the belt so when you tuck the case in the belt it should be squared off top and bottom and then you have a uh, you know here I've got this little pink rag here but you know it's a couple inches on the top couple inches on the bottom it should be should be uh, uh, centered <clears throat> uh, but this really does not does not look good So just before that colors reverse, let me go back here. Look, you can see that uh, the team begins to split. Um, U.S. and right guard are tr are falling behind. Now it's not the guard; uh, it's not the guard's issue. Left guard and uh, <clears throat> and what should be organizational bear are you're stepping ahead there, and that that shouldn't be at all. So, and I don't know exactly where that happened. So, a couple of steps here, uh, as Commander was calling, those two steps were uh, a little shorter than the other two. Slight bit of phasing in that colors reverse, but still... <clears throat> not bad <coughs> so the purpose of this uh, this halt so f so quickly uh, the, the purpose of that the halt that was so quickly after the colors reverse is so that you have to recover from the colors reverse in it just immediately less than a split second you have to make sure that you're that as you execute, you're executing flanks and not the, the face and marches. But a, as you execute those movements, all the movements are square for everybody. And as soon as you, you know, pull into your parking space, you've got that equal distance. And it didn't look like the color bearers had that equal distance. <clears throat> so we'll go here to the third one as it loads. Oh, and we missed a bunch here, too. Good. Follow, follow, follow. Okay, good head turn, at least. Come on, cameraman. Come on. Thank you. 
It was, and it would have been better had you been following the whole time. <clears throat> So now I'm picking up a stomp. Yeah. Just tiny, tiny phasing. Not a big deal. <clears throat> In the feet, that is. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that uh, left guard, feet facing forward. U.S., feet facing forward. Not sure about uh, right, but... Uh, organizational bear feet at a slight angle outward and they should be parallel as you're marching in place marching forward need to be parallel uh, it's better body alignment it's better on your joints it's uh, much healthier also it's uniformity of technique as you're performing and you want uniformity of technique that presents a much stronger performance, a stronger image that's imprinted in the minds of the judges, your audience. <clears throat> so judges saluting with the uh, at eyes eyes right. The the salute's not for the judge. This salute is reporting in and reporting out. But hear that stomp? That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be at all. You should be... Now, you're going to make some noise. <clears throat> That's definite. That It's just going to happen. You're a team of four, and nobody expects you to... Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh, I want to watch the feed again. So, uh, nobody expects you to... Uh, 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 to to tread so lightly that you can barely hear anything. You're going to make some sound, but to purposefully stomp your your feet down, uh, you need to lift using your thigh muscles, your glutes, everything, um, all the muscles that are 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 working. You need to lift the foot, but also then place it down using the same muscles. Purposefully lift, purposefully place the uh, the feet. <clears throat> But yeah, that's that's too much. So technically, though, on the uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that's interesting. So uh, technically, you should be heel striking as you moving as you're moving forward, which is a complete departure from what the here the the right rifle guard has to do, which is marching in place and rotating that 45 degrees. So the rest of you should be heel striking, which is one of the reasons why the Marine Corps will uh, uh, half step with a toe strike. So you're toe striking, which so it really isn't the technique that we follow. Army, Air Force, and Space Force march half step. Not bad, though. Not bad at all. Uh, march half step with. Uh... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no. Okay. Good. Good. Boy, your wheels in both directions are very strong. Really nice. Really nice job. That was. That was pretty good. So, um, <clears throat> although, uh, interestingly, the uh, oh, you didn't go to half, the good didn't go to parade rest. Hmm. Yeah. Or well, actually, maybe you did, uh, but it was cut out. Well, I, I didn't get that that portion of the video or or something. But anyway, thank you very much for the uh, the critique request. Let's look at the two photos. So we have uh, attention. Let me see if I can get this bigger. There we. Well, kind of, sorta. I'll enlarge it here. There, that's a little better. All right. So you're at port. 
uh, using strong grip, but your fingers are pointing down. And so somebody was based on a guard trained and has been teaching you. I noticed also that your, uh, <clears throat> your cupped hands are centered on uh, the stripe, uh, which is fine any other time. It's, it's not appropriate here because you're working off of regulation drill only. You can't use ceremonial uh, methods and, and techniques. And uh, so port is a little shallow, which again is fine for ceremonial techniques, but not for regulation drill. The, uh, uh, the upper sling swivel band should be at chin level and the uh, uh, the rifle needs to split the the left shoulder the the upper hand guard needs to split the left shoulder so you should be yeah oh you are okay so um, <clears throat> if you were if you were to to if you were authorized to use the ceremonial techniques then what you would look like is this the back of your hand would be facing forward, not off to the side. And then you'd have a, st a strong arm presence here. Tuck your thumb, which it looks like you're doing, but you'd have your hand not back touching the staff. It, sh it would be, f the your forearm should be four inches away from your torso. And then uh, uh, fingers extended and joined, but that four inch distance there, you, you don't have it. So really, I would suggest the uh, uh, the two hand grip. I like it much better. Air Force port for colors looks great. It really does. It's nice. <clears throat> but most uh, most people I've encountered uh, can't master it because of the flared hand. Because the the staff starts to get wobbly, and it takes a lot of work to get that so that the staff doesn't move because you have to hold it away from your, your hip. Um, anyway, uh, so two-handed is is grasping with the, staff, the, the, with the left hand all the way around, wrapping that left hand. <coughs> but still, uh, the team does look quite sharp. Let me see if I can get out of this now. All right. And then, oh, this is at present. Okay, so let's go in here. So, um, in the video, it looked as if left guard had wrapped that left hand. And then uh, right rifle was, uh, was flared. So, I, you know, with white gloves, white sling, mean, uh, me not being there so I can look at the side. Um, feet look great. Your spacing throughout almost all all the time throughout the whole performance was just fantastic really well done and again you know having the uh, uh, not having the organizational just bearing the state and I'll, I told you I'll, I'll put that uh, I'll put that link down below uh, actually a couple of links that uh, I I'd, I'd suggest you read you can get an understanding of what I'm talking about here but you <clears throat> you have the proper equipment you're using it properly really well done a uh, couple of things here and there, but but still, that was a a nice performance to watch. That was, it's very entertaining, and that's you know that's what this is uh, uh, at least overall effect is about. What, how the, the communication is coming across, and that was sharp, very sharp, well done. So thanks for the request, and read those links down below. Thank you.